In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to read the coefficient table used in SPS regression. As a reminder, the independent variable is grades. That's what we're trying to estimate or predict. And the independent variables are absences and SAT scores. There are four videos in this playlist. The first video was using the SPS tool to develop the regression equation. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to read the coefficient table in a lot of detail. In the third video, I'll discuss how to read the ANOVA table in detail. And in the fourth video, I'll discuss the model summary table. The coefficient table has a lot of values in it. And I'm going to walk you through and discuss and explain how all these values are derived and their meaning behind them as well. And I'll be honest, this is a difficult topic, and I'll do my best to be clear and concise when I explain. The first set of values, the betas in brown, are the regression equation, noted by B0, B1, and B2. And this is my regression equation. So I have y hat, which is my estimated grade, is equal to 33.422, and that's my constant, or my y-intercept, right there, the y-intercept, more or less, minus, this minus 3.340 times the number of absences, plus 0 0.094 times the SAT score. I can come up with an estimated grade by putting in the actual values. So I take 33.422 minus 3.340 times the number of actual absences. Now I take plus 0.094 times the actual SAT score of 620 for student number one. Now if I add all this up, it equals 78. So I put that 78 in that last column. I could repeat that and do that for all the estimated grades for all students. The next column over is standard error, STD error. And think margin of error when you see that. All the betas are just estimates, so there's going to be a range or a confidence interval. And depending on how good my model fits, that range or that confidence interval is going to be different sizes. If I determine my critical value for the 95% confidence, or an alpha is equal to 0 0.05, and now I determine the degrees of freedom, which is in my sample size, minus 3, because I'm estimating three things, constant, absences, and SAT score. So I have 10 minus 3 is equal to 7 degrees of freedom. Now if I look up 7 degrees of freedom and an alpha of 0 0.05 in a standard two-tail test table, like that, the critical value is 2.365. And I'll just use uh, 2.36 instead of 2.365. So now I take 2.36 times the standard error, and this is equal to 32.05. So I take 33.422 minus 32.05 and that is equal to 1.3. Now I take 32.05 plus 33.422. Let me slide that over like that and add those together and that's 65.5. So in the end, I'm 95% confident. This is my confidence interval, by the way. I'm 95% confident that beta is between 1.3 and 65.5. It's a large range, actually, isn't it? The standard error for absences is 0.773. I am 95% confident that the beta for absences is between negative 5.2 and negative 1.5. And now for the SAT score, the standard error is 
And finally, I am 95% confident that the beta for SAT scores is between 0 0.046 and 0 0.143. I'm going to skip standard coefficients right now. I'll come back to that. I'm going to talk about T scores. T is simply 33.422 divided by my standard error, and that's my T score. So my t-score for the first beta or constant is 2.46. Now I take the second one, absences, divided by its standard error. And this is equal to negative 4.320. And the last one's the SAT score. So I take 0 0.094 divided by 0 0.021. And this is equal to 4.569. Now the last column, I'll put that in there too. And what that really is, it's significance, but it's the same as the p-value. Now, I could actually make a little bell curve if I was doing hypothesis testing. And my critical value is 2.36 and negative 2.36. And I'll shade in my rejection regions. And those are my two rejection regions right there. Now, if T, if my T score falls in the rejection region, I reject my null hypothesis. And in this case, I do reject. And the same way, it could be a negative T score. And I would reject my null hypothesis on this one, too. And it's way out there, so I reject big time. But in the end, I really don't have to do that work because I have the significant level or my p-value. And if my p-value is less than 0 0.05, I reject. So I don't have to even set up a bell curve and rejection regions if I don't want to. And now for the standard coefficients, the beta, we call them beta. The way those are determined is I take the values divided by its standard deviation. So I take my grades. And I determine the standard deviation of the grades of that column of data. And the standard deviation is 15.85. So I take 82 divided by 15.85. And this is equal to 5.17. And I'll make another column of data. So I take grades, each individual grade, and divide by the standard deviation. And that's what I would come up with. I repeat and do the same thing for absences. I take each value and divide by 2.5, and that's what I would come up with. And I repeat this for these SAT scores as well. And now I have standardized scores right there. So I, instead of using those values, I run a regression using my standardized values, and that's what I would come up with for my betas. That's what those values mean. So that's how all the coefficient numbers are derived. And up next is ANOVA. And I'll discuss that in some detail. As always, share the knowledge, share the love. Facebook, Google+, Twitter. Questions and comments below. Like us and subscribe.